Okay, I admit it, I am a late passenger on the Zelda train. In fact, the first time I became acquainted with Link was earlier this year when I decided to try out Twilight Princess on my Steam Deck. Before that, I was becoming slowly and slowly more interested in the Zelda franchise, particularly because of how popular Breath of the Wild became and how much coverage it was getting. So naturally, I decided to see what all the fuss was about. I wanted to experience Breath of the Wild on the Switch, and I figured that at the time, the best and most affordable way for me to get into the Switch ecosystem was to get the Switch Lite. I know everyone's talking about Tears of the Kingdom right now and I know that the Switch technology in general is in need of a refresh. Nevertheless, my goal for today's video is to share with you my experience as a newbie playing Breath of the Wild solely on this Switch Lite. One of the first things that I noticed about Breath of the Wild and what really drew me to it in the first place is the sheer amount of detail that goes into the game. The vast expanses of land, wildlife, weather and climate conditions, items that you can forage for and cook. So at the beginning, a large part of my gameplay was just exploring and figuring things out as I went along. In this part of the timeline, Link wakes up from a hundred year slumber and is tasked with freeing Hyrule from the curse of Calamity Ganon and saving Princess Zelda. And so you have that main quest, but to me, the real story in this game is the one that you create through your adventures. because. Nobody's journey in Breath of the Wild is exactly the same. Along the way, you meet many interesting characters, like villagers in quaint towns who will send you off on side quests, as well as the champions who once piloted the divine beasts that once protected Hyrule. Now, the Switch Lite has a 5.5 inch LCD screen, and one of the main concerns I had was that it would be too small for me to enjoy something as visually impressive as Breath of the Wild. But that ended up not being the case. During cutscenes and in dialogue, I was able to read on screen text text just fine. Granted, I do have 2020 vision. Even though the resolution is only 720p, the size of the screen means that the graphics and visuals appear crisp and clear. If I did have to give a criticism, I'd say that the image appears a little washed out at times and maybe not as saturated as I'd like. Either way, I will say that the display was more than enough for me to enjoy the game on the go. Let's talk about a few other miscellaneous specs and features that we can get those out of the way. In terms of the battery, at moderate brightness levels, I usually get around four to four and a half hours of gameplay with Breath of the Wild before having to plug it into charge. The good thing is that the Switch Lite uses USB-C technology to charge, which is the same as most of my other devices, so I never have to worry about finding a charger. Finally, since I got the physical version of Breath of the Wild, the only storage that the game uses in my case is for updates or DLCs. If you were to get the digital version, that would take up about 13 to 15 gigabytes of storage. The Switch Lite comes with 32 gigabytes of internal storage, but there is a micro SD card slot that you can use. Thanks to the Switch Lite's small form factor, I was able to take Link and his adventures with me wherever I went. The device weighs in at 276 grams, for comparison's sake, my Steam Deck comes in at a whopping 669 grams, and the red box switch, this one weighs in at 423 grams with the Joy-Cons attached. The device has a unibody design with rounded corners. There are no dedicated grips that you would find on something like the Steam Deck, for example, so I did find that after a while of gameplay my hands would get cramped especially in those high stress situations like fighting the ganons but it's a compromise i'm happy to make in order to have this small form factor now in terms of physical controls the main difference between the switch Lite and other iterations of the switch is that the actual physical controls are built in and there are no detachable joy cons although you can connect the joy cons via bluetooth if you wanted to use those and then just use this the screen on the switch Lite. i know you're probably thinking well why would you buy a switch that does not have the components that makes a switch a switch and again i think that comes down to just wanting to have that much smaller and uh, more compact form factor. And I actually much prefer having the controls built in for the purpose of handheld gameplay. At first, the control scheme for Breath of the Wild felt a little convoluted to me simply because of the amount of different inputs that you have to remember. From crouching to accessing your weapons to getting into your inventory. And let's talk specifically about the controls for combat in the game. At first, I was just doing a lot of button mashing because I was overwhelmed, not knowing whether I should engage 
engage enemies directly with melee weapons or attack them from a distance using my archery skills. And then as time went on, I started to memorize the controls and learned how to quickly switch between weapons and runes using the d-pad for example or accessing my inventory to eat a three course meal during the heat of battle you know those games that give you a wear headphones for the best experience message during the opening credits well i think that message applies to breath of the wild as well because the sound design in this game is amazing everything from the location specific themes to the sound of link's footfall to the howl of the wind or wolves in the distance. Overall, the sense of situational and environmental awareness that the sound design creates makes the game a lot more enjoyable. Problem solving is a huge part of this game, particularly with the shrines. There are 120 throughout the game. Some of them are puzzle based, some of them are combat based. Sometimes I'd find myself getting really frustrated by a puzzle and then I'd say to myself, look, you have all the tools and resources you need. They wouldn't put this here if it was not solvable. And I admit that sometimes I just end up using a guide online because I wasn't smart enough i guess to solve a shrine but usually what it came down to was just me taking a step back looking at the resources and tools i had seeing the bigger picture and realizing that more often than not there was more than one way to solve a problem even outside of the shrines in the overworld the way you progress in the game depends on how you're able to manipulate your surroundings you might discover for example that yes instead of swimming all the way out into a body of water to reach a treasure chest you could simply use your cryonis and build ice blocks to reach it or or instead of running into an enemy camp full fury, you could try rolling a bomb towards them or wait until nightfall to sneak past and steal all their weapons. Now, no matter how powerful you become in this game, no matter how many weapons you have, no matter how many stamina or heart containers you have, you're still at the mercy of nature and basic physics and chemistry. For example, there is a weather cycle, so when it's raining, you'll find that it's a lot harder to scale a mountain. When you're in a volcanic region, you're going to spontaneously combust if you have wooden weapons equipped. And if you're in colder regions, you have to know that you're going to need warmer clothing if you don't want to lose health. So really, it's all about finding the best ways to interact with your environment to ensure survival. And that's a challenge that I really enjoy. Now, before I give you my closing thoughts, I wanted to introduce you to someone who I think can give you a little more insight on what it's like to play Breath of the Wild on the Switch Lite as opposed to on the regular Switch either in handheld or in docked mode. This is my brother Eros. He is a passionate gamer himself and just for some more context, this is someone who fights Lionels for fun, who recently completed all of the shrines in Tears of the Kingdom and who has put hours into both games. So naturally I've asked him to share his experience with us. While playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in handheld mode, I find that the Nintendo Switch Lite has given me a much better handheld experience. It comes down to two key factors. One, the return of the D-pad, because I'm sure you know, when the Nintendo Switch launched, there was a lot of controversy surrounding what replaced the D-pad, being this. It gets the job done, but the glorious D-pad made its return of the Switch Lite in 2019, and this is one very underrated aspect of control. One other thing that I really enjoyed was the unibody design of the Switch Lite helped make using the gyro controls a lot easier than with the cumbersome, almost cumbersome Nintendo Switch. While playing in docked mode, which is exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, the big screen experience is definitely a huge part of what makes gameplay good and it makes it a lot more immersive as well. Who would I recommend the Switch Lite to? Anyone who's looking to get into the Switch ecosystem but isn't too sure about how often they'll be in front of the TV or if you have young kids that might want to use it, it's a lot more durable than just the 
base switch because you know Joy-Con on and off rails. If you drop this, it's a bit of a problem. I personally think Breath of the Wild is one of, if not the greatest adventure game ever made. Hyrule in Breath of the Wild and in the sequel Tears of the Kingdom is like nothing I've ever experienced before. Without many spoilers, Tears of the Kingdom has exceeded the limits the Breath of the Wild set. Now, ultimately, I think you can tell that I really enjoy this game and experiencing it on the Switch Lite. I love that Breath of the Wild allows you to do things at your own pace. Maybe you're the kind of player who is focused on discovering all the parts of the map and cooking and discovering new recipes and collecting horses or maybe you were the kind of person who wants to perfect your combat and maybe collect all the Korok seeds that are scattered throughout the game. There is nothing that is forcing you to go in any particular direction and that's a liberating feeling. This is the first game that I've been fascinated by in a long time. I found that with each play session I was becoming more and more invested and more and more excited and curious about what was coming next. And when I finally defeated Ganon, I logged about 60 hours in the game and most of those hours were compressed into a very short time period. What sets this game apart for me is the sense of wonder it creates and the sheer curiosity it sparks, how fulfilling it feels to be able to fend for yourself and survive out in the open world. I know that I still have so much to do, lots of side quests, lots of shrines, and even though I own Tears of the Kingdom, I probably won't get to that anytime soon because there is still so much of Breath of the Wild for me to discover and enjoy. So that's all from me for today. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Comment and let me know if you are a fan of Zelda. Have you played Breath of the Wild? Were you into it? Were you not? And if you want to see some of my other gaming related content, I highly recommend that you check out the video that I did on my experience with the Steam Deck, as well as one of my other videos on some of the games that I've been enjoying on the deck. I will leave links to both of those down in the description and they'll probably be somewhere here on the screen. So take good care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.